Hello everyone and welcome back to Corbel Space Program. In the last episode we were fin just finished uh, making a test launch for our satellite deployer. So I believe we are ready to do it live. But before we go get to that, I would like to change a couple small, small aspects of it. So let, let me load the vehicle. And the most important thing I think we have to uh, decrease this force percentage on our separators. If you leave this one at 100%, they are going to uh, bump into each other. If you leave this at zero, they are just going to drop and that's it. We'll have to move ourselves. So, I think this is going to be okay. Anything else? I really uh, lowered the no, I didn't. The thrust limiter is still high on these. I think I did only one side, maybe. Let me double check. Or maybe I didn't save. That is more likely. Also, why is there no separator on this side? Uh, you face this way. Oh, come on. There we go. So 25. Now this one was 25. So I... Yes, I did do it. I just didn't do it on both sides. So let's check. You are fine. And you are fine. Okay. Let's save it like this. Anything else we can do. So we have the three satellites. Okay, so... If you don't mind, I will go out, I'll tab out, and I will bring up the little helper for myself on a special site, which is the Kerbal Resonant. Oh, come on. Kerbal uh, Resonant Orbit. There it is. Resonant Orbit Calculator. Uh, search for it on Google. You will find it, I'm sure. This will let you create what what I'm trying to do to create an orbit for different numbers of crafts that will keep them separate equally around a certain orbit. So we are going to use on Kerbin and I would like to have... I mean, we have lots of fuel. We have more than enough fuel, I think. So maybe I should put them a little bit higher because I was set, set, uh, having them set at 1 million meters in the last attempt, in the test. How about we put them 1.5 million? That will pay, uh, put them a little bit higher and so they are going to have a bit more uh, forgiving uh, error bars when it comes to drift on their orbits. So let's enable line of sight. Yeah, I think I will put them at one and a half million. So we have three satellites and these guys are ready to go. Okay, so we save and we make sure everything is staged correctly. Yes, they are. Yes, this is it. And the last stage we are going to do manually. Okay. So we are go for launch. Okay, we are on the launch pad. There we go. So the, uh, enable SAS. Uh, throttle up. In fact, I will take a little screenshot there we go so with this music we are ready to go there you are let's keep turning and I believe I will see you when we are in orbit
Okay, I think at this point I can officially start commentating again because we are getting close to our one and a half million meter or uh, apoapsis. Technically, we are still not in orbit because the periapsis is still below the atmosphere. So it won't be long now. Once we reach, uh, get close to this point, maybe 10 seconds, I will start burning again. And I will bring up the periapsis to one and a half million meters as well. As, as you can see, I also lower the thrust limiter on the main engine to make sure that we are doing this as precisely as we can. So let's start burning now. Mm, Apoapsis is still getting closer, but at least we are in orbit. And it should be pretty trivial to bring the periapsis up to this point. Which we might be able to do right about now. Ah, pretty close. So, the satellites will go around uh, more or less on this orbit. So, let's see. We only need about 100 delta V to accomplish this task, and we have 2200, so 2300 even, so I think we are just going to be able to do this fine. So, let's see. Let me set the orbit as precisely as I can. Instead of going by the height, I will go with the, the period, so the closest I think is going to be 2 hours 50 minutes. I would like to lower this this 35 seconds, so I will turn retrograde, or in, yes, I will turn, no, I will keep pro prograde, and I will release the first satellite. So let me focus on it. So let's see. I will deploy the solar panels. Extend this one, extend this one. This one is on the top, so it will not collide with the struts. Extend solar panel. Do I need to enable this one? I don't think so. It's enabled all the time. It's not like the deployable satellite dishes. Do I need to do anything with the probe core? Hibernation off. So I think we are ready to release the first satellite. So, right click on the decoupler and we are decoupling. Now we can switch to this guy. So, there we are. And I am just going to give it a small... In fact, I think I will also make sure that the thrust limiter is down maybe 2%. And let's give it a small kick. After I enable the engine, of course. So, activate engine. And now, just a small kick. There it is. So, we are now officially separated from the carrier vessel. The solar panels are fine. Let's see. Electrical charge is at 100%, so I think we are just fine. Let me adjust the orbit. So we are separating from the craft. Let me turn a little bit towards Kerbin. So I can actually leave, get out of the way of the main carrier vessel. And at this point I will turn retrograde and I will get rid of this 40, uh, yeah, 47 seconds of extra orbital period. We only really need to synchronize the time, not exactly the height of the orbit. If the time is synchronized, then they are going to uh, go around Kerbin at the same rate. And that is what's most important. 
having the exact same orbital, uh, orbital uh, apoapsis and periapsis would be nice, but it's not exactly critical. Okay, I will stop now and I will lower the limiter even more, maybe half percent. And I will try to make this one as precise as possible. Maybe now. Okay. The first satellite is officially in orbit. Let me quick save. Switch back to the carrier vessel. And I will have to make our... Let's see. Uh, where is the... So one and a half million meters orbit. I will need to do our... Yes, I will need to increase our orbit to 2.38 million. So, let me turn prograde. The satellite is now well out of the way of the plume. So, I will increase our orbital period. I mean orbital apoapsis to 2.38. Seven. See you on the other side. Uh, that's overshot a little bit, so let me turn retrograde. We are still early in the orbit, so that's fine. Better do the corrections now than later. And I will f uh, physics warp through these turns because this is still a bit unwieldy. Okay, so 2.387. Let me lower the limiter. I want to make this as precise as possible. Three eight nine. Three eight eight. To be exact, we have to be three eight seven nine three seven. Okay, we are a bit under, so let me adjust even more by turning prograde. There we go, I will lower the limiter even more for more precise control. So, 187, that is right. We need, just need to raise a little bit, 937 at the lower end. So I think this will do. Yeah, close enough. So, I will need to turn retrograde at this point because once we get, let me show you, once we go one more orbit, then we are going to go slow down back into this orbit again. And at that point, the satellite we released will be... Let's see, we are slowing... Yes, it will be ahead of us by one third orbit. At least I hope so. So far so good. Okay, let me turn retrograde right now. And we messed up, I think. Good thing we saved. So let me quick load. Because I forgot to enable the satellite, uh, the solar panels on these, and we run out of power. So we can extend this one and this one and this one we cannot extend this one on this side because we have this uh, the structural parts in the way but we can extend this one and this one and this one okay that should take care of our electrical charge 
So, let's try again. We turn prograde and we increase back to 2.387. No, no, prograde please. There we go. Three, eight, oh, we overshot again. I was looking at the resonance calculator. But that's fine, we are still early in our correctional orbit. So, let's lower the thrust limiter there. Please turn towards the retrograde marker. Okay. 387. I'm talking about this one, by the way, if, in case it wasn't ob obvious. So 38. Okay. And uh, 38793. Ah, close enough. So we are going to be... Oh, wait. Yes, that is correct. We need to be retrograde when, when we got back here. So... We can warp here. Yeah, and our, our electric charge is now fine. We should be able to do this maneuver when we get back. And we are... Perfectly. Perfect. So, as I was saying, this satellite is now about one-third way ahead of us in our orbit. And when we reach periapsis, I will bring our apoapsis back down to this level. So, let's see. Exit map mode. And keep an eye on our periapsis time. Also, I need to increase the thrust limiter. And, yeah, once we reach 2 hours 50 minutes of orbital period, I will stop. So, let's fast forward until our periapsis time is fast approaching. There we go, 20 seconds from now. We are keeping retrograde. I'm very happy that this probe course can do this kind of autopilot. It's too early. There we go. Two hours and... almost. Two hours and 50 minutes. Close enough. So, I will quick save again. There we go. After this one, this satellite will be here, and this satellite we are releasing now will be here. So, we should be good to release this one. So we can decouple. Ugh, it was a bit... wonky. But as long as we get it out of the fairing, it's going to be fine. Also, we can turn prograde. Okay, let's see. I would like to get out of the way, so I will burn just a little bit now. There we go. Okay, now we can switch to this one, enable this uh, solar panel, and let me make sure that we are actually having the same exact orbital period that the one we have around here, this part. So, let me lower the thrust limiter to one half percent and I will bring oh yeah 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 before I do that I need to enable the engine that's it so we are decreasing our orbital period and I will stop at 250 which is now Ah, close enough. 
The drift is so minimal that we can do we can have these in orbit for years before they do anything drastic. So we can save, switch back to the carrier vessel, turn prograde, and we can go for the second route. I mean the second correction. Okay, so let's save. We are turning prograde and we go back to 2.38793. Two point three eight. There we go. Now we lower the thrust limiter to be as precise as we can. Eight six eight seven eight seven nine three. Yeah. Nine ten. Two, nine, three. Yeah, this is close enough. So we are going to, after this, we are going to turn pro retrograde in preparation for the end of the orbit because there is no actual uh, vehicle control during time warp. So now we get into map mode and save again and I will fast forward until here. It's a bit slow. I, oh yeah, because we are still in physics warp. So now we can do warp. There we go. This is getting ahead of us. Perfect. And we can do the maneuver here. So we are one minute away from our periapsis. Now the thing is, uh, I forgot to add a probe core to this stage. So after we release the satellite, this is going to be in orbit for the foreseeable future until we recover it. But that's a small price to pay. I don't think the satellite has enough fuel to do a deorbiting for this one, so yeah, this will have to stay, I think. And that is fine. So we are half minute away from our periapsis. We are in retrograde. So let's bring this orbital period down to 250. In a couple seconds. Cross limiter is low, so good thing I checked. So, let's bring it down. It's still too early. Uh, if we enable the engine and the time to periapsis goes up too fast, it's too early to burn. But we are already 2.58. So tell you what. Let's just do it slowly, which is done. Yeah, this is perfect. So. Let's quick save. And at this point, I think we can release. So, we can decouple right here. There we go. Please don't break anything, thank you. Extend the solar panel. Okay, so we can enable the engine. There we go. We can enable SAS and we can enable retrograde. And at this point, this guy is dead weight. We can lower the thrust limiter so we can bring down our orbital period by five seconds. Engine is enabled. There we go. Three, four, three seconds, two seconds. One second, and it is done. There we go. We have a nice little relay satellite network around Corbin. And let's see. I believe these uh, satellite dishes can actually reach all of the inner planets all the time after we upgrade our tracking center to level three. And if the alignment is just right, 
I think we can even reach Dress or maybe even Jewel. So, this will serve us for the foreseeable future. Okay, what can I do about this guy? I don't think I can do anything because it's not controllable anymore. I should have put a, a probe core on it, but I think this will be a Kessler syndrome candidate for us in the for the time being. So at this point, I think we can. You know what? Let's turn off the SAS on these probes. First, let's stabilize the orientation and then we can turn off it, turn it off. And at this point, I think we can go back to the space center. Let's go to the tracking station first, to, just to make sure. But I think everything should be just fine. Mm -hmm. This one is a bit... No, it's, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. We have a nice little relay network. Let's see. I don't really want to manually terminate these debris because that kind of goes against the whole man whole thing about, you know, if it's up there, it's up there. So I will leave any debris we have up there until we collect it. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Okay, so about these flags, I was meaning to rename them correctly. Can I really name them from here? Let's see. I'm not entirely sure that we can, but if we can, I would like to name them. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I cannot from here. Maybe from the tracking station somehow. So the minimum slope, that's okay. Can I somehow rename? I'm sure there is a way, but I don't know how. No, the double clicking just loads the actual craft. Okay, it's night on Minmus. Good to know. Okay, let's see, anything I can do around here maybe, sorry I know this is kind of a testing thing I'm doing now, but I don't think I can do anything, oh, that's fine, we just need to be a bit more careful when we place the ones from here. So, with this little relay network around Kerbin, I think maybe it's time to start a unmanned Duna mission. So, let's see. I will use the same probe core that I use for the, the satellites. You know what, I will be right back with you after I'm finished designing the probe. Okay, I think we are back, so I decided that this is going to be our little probe, 
that is going to go to Duna. So here's the thing. I included these seism uh, seismic uh, accelerometers and they are, as far as I know, only really usable when landed on a solid uh, celestial body. And this thing is not capable of landing on Duna, I think. But maybe it can land on Ike, Duna's moon. So I think we are going to attempt doing that. It has... It should have enough power to transmit the science. Also the thing is... The science junior and the goo containers are only usable once. Because we are not going to bring any scientists with us. So I think uh, I will try to conserve our science junior after we landed on Ike. And also I will use one of the goo containers from around Duna, I think. Everything else should be reusable. Maybe I'm not sure about the that magnetometer magnet magnetometer boom arm. So let's retract everything and I will put this into a little subassembly. So this is let me do the reroute here and I will put this into a subassembly. Can I do this now? Yes I can. So you are going to be our um, autonomous, uh, you know what, just call it interplanetary probe. There we go. Let's save. So did I forget anything? Let me just go through quickly through the different subcategories uh, for our parts. There is a reaction wheel on this probe course, so we don't need an external one. Anything else? Of course we will need a separator for the... Let's see, I will just put it now. That's fine. Also, as you might have noticed, I did a bit of a cheeky thing. Uh, I did three uh, fuel tanks. We have a small tank in the middle and we have two ring tanks on the side. I think it should be okay. I also included uh, unretractable solar panels on the side just in case I forget to uh, ex um, extend the, these arms before I decouple. So, let's see. The small fairing would be enough, but I think I will just use this one. Let's see, can it go around the satellite dish? No, it can't. So we need to extend it just a little bit. There we go. That's it. Our payload is safely stuck behind this fairing. Okay, what's the problem? We need to use shift. There we go. We don't need aerodynamics for this probe, of course. Do I need to add landing legs? Because I want to land on the uh, on Ike. But it doesn't have to be upright, so I don't think I will include a landing leg. It doesn't need a heat shield, because Ike has no atmosphere. I doubt with electronics, we have a circular battery and lots of solar panels. Communication should be okay. Okay, science experiments, we have everything that we have access to currently. Yeah, I think that's it. So, let's build the rocket. We need a Duna injection stage. Let's see. 
has to be a bit beefy. So I will include two of these. And then maybe a uh, cheetah, I don't think so. That is that, let's see. Wait, this one looks like the vacuum engine. Because it has a battle thrust in vacuum. Yeah. And it has a better uh, fuel usage in vacuum. So this is the vacuum engine of this uh, tank diameter. So yeah, sure. I would use a cheetah for this one. Let's see the different variants. We only have two. Mm, doesn't really matter. I will use the naked one. Sure. What about these tanks? Mm. I will use them like this. Let me turn this around. There we go. A bit of color doesn't hurt anyone. What about the fairing? Mm -hmm. Sure. What is clamshell deploy? quite sure. Anyway, I will lower the ejection force because that looks a bit better. And if I increase, ah, no, two is just fine. Okay, so this will be our Duna injection stage. Then we need a separator again. So, decoupler, let's see. This is too small. This is what we need. Okay, I think we need to use this variant. Just for the sake of aerodynamics. Then we need... Okay, you know what? Just to be extra sure, I would like to consult the Delta V map. So, let me open the Delta V map. There it is. So, as usual, we need 3400 to actually reach Kerbin orbit. With such sm a small payload, I think it's perfectly doable. I will include an extender so we can use bigger fuel tanks. I will use this one. What are the paint jobs here? Mm. I think we'll stick to this orange paint job. Yeah, sure. This one sticks out a little bit, but I think it's fine. So, this time I will use three of these big tanks. Then, I will... Let's see, which engine to use? I think I will go for the... Yeah, the main seal will be fine. Okay, let's see. For Duna, where is the Duna on the map? Hmm. It doesn't really need all that much. Let's see. So we need 950 Delta V to actually leave Kerbin orbit. That is, I think with uh, maybe a moon assist can achieve that just fine. So we can actually save some fuel with that. And then after that we just need 130 Delta V to actually make a Duna flyby. Then 250 extra just to get into orbit. And 306 to get into a circular orbit. 
So we don't really need all that much data. V. Six if I'm reading this correctly, we need about uh, five uh, no, 6,500 uh, 6, data V. So maybe if I add a couple of side boosters, we should be able to reach that. So I will include a side decoupler. There we go, in double configuration. And if I use this guy, which we have experience with, let's see where that gets us. Bobcat, I think, yeah, that's the one that fits. Okay, we have 5200. So I don't think this is enough. Let's go with... Uh, how about using the Pollux. Mm -hmm. That is a bit closer, but as expected, we are over our weight limit, but we have lots of money at this point. So I think I will upgrade a couple of things around the uh, KSC. One of which is going to be the launch pad, which is very, very cheap. And now we have unlimited vessel size and weight. And I will also upgrade the tracking station. Or maybe I should wait. Hmm. Let's see. How much does this cost at this point? 67,000. 67, so it's pretty cheap. So I think we can afford to upgrade tracking station. That will leave us with less than 200,000, but that still should be enough to make it to Duna. So I think we are going to be fine. So at this point, vessel weight is not a concern anymore. Okay, so this Pollux is... Uh, it's nice, but I don't think is just quite enough. So, how about we just do some asparag asparagus staging again? So, we will need. Let's go, let's say this is the. Oh, it's just liquid fuel. That's not enough. Uh, I will just use these big ones on the side. Again, we need to do this in symmetry mode so two times symmetry there it is and frankly i think the booster should be uh, uh, orange so color things correctly so you will be white and this decides these as well Sure, this is fine. So you will be like this. Mm -hmm. And the fairing. You know what? I think I like this silver thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. For the side boosters, I think I will use the mains the not the skipper engine what about the kodiak no that's too small yeah the skipper will be fine and that will get us into the correct limit okay so next up we need some nose cones let's see it's under aerodynamics there you are you are going to be this is it, perfect. Okay, let's see what's next. We need to put the fuel lines from the side into the middle. So that's under here, that's it. So we are feeding from the side into the middle. Uh -huh. 
and we are engaging the two engines at the same time. That gives us a tiny bit of extra delta V. Then we separate the boosters, then we separate the main engine and engage the Duna stage. I will deal with the fairing manually. There we go, this is the probe engine. Yeah. I think this is the most rocket looking rocket we ever built. Yeah. So, let's see. What else can we do? We definitely need some fairings for stability. Which I will build uh, in the structural part, that's it. I used to place these fairings on the nose, but I think I will try to hide them from now on. In between the different fuel tanks, like this. Then we can add a couple launch stabilizers. Put this one right here on the top. This one can go uh, here. Okay. I think I like this craft. So let's see the different engine configurations for these. I think I like this one like this. What about you? Mm. Yeah, this is fine. So, I think we have a nice little rocket for ourselves. What do I name this one? Uh, since we are going to Duna, which is the equivalent of Mars from our solar system, I think I will call it Ares 1. Yeah, sure. Anything else I can put on before go for a test launch. No, I think that's it. So, let me just quickly go outside and check the position of Mo uh, Mars, it's Duna. Let me check the position of Duna compared to Corbin. So... Okay, let's see. Let me just quickly search. So, Duna. Uh, let's see. Transfer window. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly ideal, but I think it's doable. It's a bit too much, uh, too far ahead of us. But, yeah, I think we can do this. And you know what? I think I will leave the episode right here. And I will do this mission in the next one. Because we are getting close to our time limit. And maybe having one our episode is a bit much, so I will try to keep these at around 45 minutes from now on. So, with that out of the way, let me thank you for watching the episode. If you liked it, you can leave a like, leave a comment, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.